is Rafael R. G. Margaro. I am the inventor of the Mighty Engine. That's spelled M-Y-T, means massive yet tiny. The single row cylinders configuration, which is 32 cylinders, or equivalent of, is 850 cubic inches. We have a back-to-back -back version, which is equivalent to 64 cylinders, that is 1,700 cubic inches, hence the word massive, yet tiny. In reference to the physical size, it's 14 inches across, 14 inches deep. Now, this engine replaces the 5 feet long, 4.5 feet tall, 2 feet wide, 3,000 pound big rig engine. If you guys are seeing the big rigs, that, that is the engine. So basically 3,000 pounds will be replaced by 150 pounds. They're the same displacement, 850 cubic inches, 850 cubic inches, except that's only six pulses or six cylinders, massive six cylinders. This is 32 pulses, all right? So basically, unfortunately, I don't think you will see this in the, under the hood of your car. The car manufacturers will not give you 850 cubic inches. It's just too much power, right? This will be the size of the engine of your car. We take out your V6, your V8 engine, remove about 800 pounds. We give you back 25 pounds at this measurement, four and a half inch diameter across, seven inches long. We give you back 25 pounds. We give you 200 to 500 horsepower in performance. If you want fuel economy, as long as you run diesel or biofuel, which we recommend because it's the only fuel that we have run where you don't need to change oil. The same fuel lubricates the engine, hence no change oil, okay? And it's cleaner. The farmers of America can plant this fuel, okay? Now, I guarantee, if you do that, I guarantee 150 miles to a gallon because we still have not taken into account what happens when we remove 800 pounds from your vehicle. That's still wide in the open, right? Now, we all know that a V12 engine will always make more pulses than a four-cylinder engine. We've got about 30 cylinders in this package. Now, let's get back to the prototype. This is prototype number one. The actual design, the only job it needed to do was to prove the theory, okay? But since the internal components of this engine is already under the hood of your car, in other words, nothing brand new, just configured in a different way. So it's proven for the 100 years, I just configured it in a different way. So it has a very, very high mechanical efficiency rating over 100 years of development, right? So basically, here are some of the history of the, the Mighty Engine prototype number one. First proof of concept, Mighty Engine. That was the only original intention for this engine. But since it was built so well, we went ahead and did the first diesel fuel run to proof of concept as a combustion ignition engine. We went ahead and did the first engine, Bio 100 Soybean Fuel, Pure Engine Research and Development. You might see on the gas station a B20 Bio Diesel. That's 20% soybean, 80% diesel. This is 100% soybean. The farmers of America can plant this fuel, okay? Now, first air motoring data run on a Dynamotor at 150 PSI, input generating 814 foot-pounds of torque at only 800 RPM. For those of you guys who don't understand 800 RPM, that's slightly above idle on your car. In other words, you're sitting in traffic, you're waiting for the light to come on, your engine is idling, this thing's making 814 foot-pounds of torque. Now, there's only a few exotic cars in the planet that can do that. One of them is up there, the Bugatti, but it doesn't do it at idle. It does it at maximum redline RPM, all right? This does it at idle. First 1,000 miles logged in on the year 2000 Ford Focus, equipped with the mighty engine running on atmosphere air. No compressed air stored in the tanks. Now, this is a wonderful ha wonderful event that had happened to us. This is like an accident. The, the real deal was to run it on fuel, and we found out that we could run on atmosphere air. Now, but basically, we don't have protection for that. But we went ahead and logged in 1,000 hours, about six months development, and we put the car away, and we're currently applying for the patents on that. Then we'll be able to discuss that. Besides, we don't want to upset anybody, okay? What basically we want to do is we want to run good fuel. It's a good start, 150 miles to a gallon, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. 
So basically, what we're going to do is, with this engine, we're going to run this to show that although we have 32 pulses, we don't have the friction losses associated with it because we don't have a, an equivalent of v, four V8 engines. We don't have the individual 32 cylinders. As a matter of fact, we only have one cylinder, which is a donut-shaped cylinder. The pistons don't have any skirt, which touches the block. So basically, all the, the drag is only the piston rings, very little. So the initially, all of the friction losses that's eaten by your engine, what we never see, you know, been happening for 100 years, that's called horsepower loss. That horsepower, for the first time, in this engine design is available at the shaft. You're beginning to get the picture now, why, why it's so powerful and so efficient. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to prove it. We're going to divide this in four sections. We'll intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. Now, we're going to borrow this one as an air motor. So we're going to charge this with air so we can rotate it. In the meantime, this will suck air, blow air, suck air, blow air, suck air, and blow air. In other words, we're adding resistance. It's doing some work. Now, so basically the, the shock input air is only 125 PSI of air, diminishing down to 75 PSI of air. You will see on the tachometer that that would be reflect 140 RPM all the way down to 50 RPM. That's 5.0. Now remember, don't forget that this is a massive engine. This engine replaces that engine and it's doing work at that little input and additional work. Okay, you're gonna see some rocking motion. That's because we've thrown the balance. We're only using one section and we're driving the other three section. All right, so here goes. Now for those of you in front, you can see the pistons on the side, okay? Now we opened up with 136 RPM. You can hear the swooshing of the air from this side. You can hear the popping sound from here. That's the compressed air. That's not running on fuel, it's compressed air. But remember, look how slow that is turning. It's doing work. Down to 89 RPM. We're starting to lose pressure. Down to 77 revolutions per minute. Barely running, but still working. The three air motors are working. They're pumping air. Now to 58 RPM. Below 50 RPM and still working. Run out of air. Or basically, that's our friction. It's so minute. And remember, this is one port of the same configuration driving three ports that's working plus the internal friction losses. So basically, although we have 32 pulses, which is responsible for that 4,000 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM. Now, this engine is important because this engine can do a power-to-weight ratio of 40 to 1. The most powerful jet engine on the planet finally, just recently, acquired 20 to 1. And that's external burning. This is internal burning. That's very expensive. This is very cheap. So basically, this can do 40 to 1 power to weight ratio on internal burn with 15 parts, very easy to manufacture. Now, we believe that this will start an industrial revolution. We want that industrial revolution to begin in the United States since this is invented in America. So that's what, I'm, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to spread the word. So please make sure you get some flyers. On the flyers are information how to get a hold of us and the website, stay in touch. But please tell people about this engine. This engine will better our economy. It will give jobs to the farmers of America. And at the same time, it will help out the truckers of the world. We've done our part. Five years development, $4 million spent. That's not a lot of money for the manufacturers. It is for us, especially employing 10 engineers and acquiring 100 patents worldwide. The only reason why we were able to do that is we put 18 hour days. Now, I'm tired. We just want to hand this over to the car manufacturers so they can manufacture in mass production so it's affordable to all of us. Let them make the big money. We're happy with royalties. So that's what this is all about. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.